Hello everyone, this is Father Ned and Father Christian once again at uh, this is just our CCD mini-series. Oh. So sorry we're a little late this week running this one. That was my fault. So let us begin again with uh, the prayer for the protection in time of pandemic. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, Son and, and of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. O Mary, you, you always, always brighten, brighten our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We, we entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, pain while remaining steadfast in faith. O loving Mother, you know what we need, and we are confident you will provide for us as at Cana and Galilee. Intercede for us with your Son, Jesus, the Divine Physician, for those who have fallen ill, for those who are vulnerable, and for those who have died. Intercede also for those charged with protecting the health and safety of others, and for those who are attending to the sick and seeking a cure. Help us, O Mother of Divine Love, to confirm the will of the Father, and to do as we are told by Jesus, who took upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows, so as to lead us through the cross to the glory of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection, we beseech refuge, O Mother, Holy Mother of God. In our needs, despise not our petitions, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin Mary. Amen. So today we'd like to talk to you about honesty. Um, and the, the Eighth Commandment. Eighth Commandment has to deal with honesty. Um, thou shalt not bear false witness. Bear false witness against thy neighbor. And so, um, and this includes uh, of a virtue, the opposite virtue of, of lying and, and bearing false witness is, is honesty, to be honest with one another. And uh, as we are all suffering, all of these things in these days, um, to me, I always go back to the reflection that it all, it all began with a lie. And because of this, look at, look at the problem. Sometimes we think that lies uh, don't harm people. And this is part of the temptation, obviously. Or we make a calculation of how much they will harm. Well, that, you know, it's better for me not to, to just tell the truth and things like this. So many times we just think, um, well, I can easily go on board with saying I shouldn't lie. But when we start to get down into the nitty-gritty, it's very difficult to practice it and to, and to be honest in all things because of the temptations that come with it. It seems it is very um, elusive to us. And as we know, uh, the father of lies is the devil. And obviously this is why there's so much temptation around it. There's so much um, things around us that can that can help us, um, or that can that can hurt us with them and not knowing. Many times it involves a calculation that we make. You know, if I say this lie, then less than the, the the lie that we believe is that a greater good might come from it. If I say this lie, well, there is our first mistake. See, the devil, since he's the father of lies, the devil, because of his intelligence. He's able to see consequences of actions, and so obviously he entices the lie in order that we can fall into it, in order that we can fall into the evil that he wants to happen. So these are the things that we must always consider um, when, we, when we are tempted to lie. I'll tell you a little story here. One day a friend of St. Thomas Aquinas cried out to him with amusement, and Thomas, uh, he said, look Thomas, there's a flying ox. And Thomas looked around him in astonishment to see that where that strange animal was, but of course he could not see it anywhere. His friend then began to laugh and he said to him that he was so surprised to see that he was so credulous. And saint, the saint replied to him, it's much easier to believe that an ox could fly than that a Christian could tell a lie. But that kind of tells you <laughs> we are held into, higher, um, into a higher standard. And this also goes to, a, to the level of authority. You know. The higher you are in authority, the higher you are in, in giving direction to others, the greater responsibility it is for you to be honest. There's different uh, nuances to this, so Father Christian will handle his nuances. Well, we'll see. But uh, I, I do want to highlight, like Father Ned said, the importance of this virtue. Um, as we see, for example, we hear uh, Jesus say, let your yes mean yes and your no mean no, 
right? And that's um, from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, there on the Sermon on the Mount, um, where he's kind of describing the whole moral life. Um, and he says, anything more is from the devil. Um, and so again, returning to this idea that of the devil, um, kind of one of the names uh, that we give him is the father of lies. And one of the things that when we renew our baptismal promises, for example, um, one of the questions that gets asked at the very beginning is, do you reject Satan? Do you reject all his empty promises? Um, and so that's part of what it means to be a Christian, is to reject the empty promises of the devil, um, which oftentimes are kind of leading us towards living a, a life that is not honest, right? Um, because when, when we follow kind of a path that takes us away from God, we are naturally, unless we kind of grow hardened to it, um, we're naturally ashamed of that, and we don't want it to be seen. And so how do we hide that? Under the cloak of dishonesty. Um, and so this is actually one of the easiest ways to tell if your life needs to take a moral turn is how honest are you, right? Because in a person who has nothing to hide generally will be very honest. A person who has a lot of things to hide will find themselves being dishonest quite often. Right. I think part of one of this, for instance, the underlying thing of this is, is when, some, when, when you're tempted to lie, what is one of the, the underlying temptations of it? Is like Father said, you know, I, I want to save embarrassment. Um, even the, the, even um, many organizations fall into this. Many, even the Catholic Church has fallen into this. It would be better for us not to tell the truth because it would be just too scandalous for people to, to know the truth of something. Instead of handling the situation as it should be handled and uh, knowing how to handle that, then taking the consequences, the consequences would be much less. But if the lies perpetuate, then the devil ha has something on you. That's the, that's the problem with lies. <clears throat> now the devil knows your secret. And the devil is the one that tries to hide you. That's it. He plays often this on us. He holds it against you. Well, what if this error would get out? What would the world think? What would someone think of you? And it's hard. It's very difficult because we are not, um, we are weak and finite human beings. We can feel things very much threatened. And this is where we make the calculation. We make the calculation of according to whatever value we hold in higher esteem, than honesty or our faith or our relationship with God. And so I could lose a lot of money. Well, I value money more than I value my relationship with God. I could lose uh, my scholarship. You know, for instance, if, I, if I'm not a person that, that's a championship rower for a particular, uh, or even know how to even row a, a boat, and yet I steal a scholarship from another good athlete that should have had that scholarship, you know, that was dishonest. I mean, it prevented someone else from getting... So, but this is something that I think in our culture, especially um, sorry, of, of the modern world, is very easy for all of us to fall into. Maybe not in so big of a way, but we have kind of a bureaucratic structure around everything, and it's very easy to lie on paperwork, right? It's like, well, you know, like, here's, you know, if I just write this down, then I'm in, right? Okay, fine. You know, what do I have to write? What, do I have to, what box do I have to check? Um, it's very important for us as Christians, even if that's a detriment to us, right, um, to be very honest, even in things that seem like they're so unimportant, they're so bureaucratic, and nobody cares, and nobody's going to look into whether you were honest or not there. That's where I think it can be most difficult for us sometimes to be honest. Well, your um, typical example is taxes. Right. Who's honest with taxes? And is the tax department themselves honest? <laughs> you know, it's, there's a lot of arbitrary laws in our tax code. So, right. So it it kind of fuels a desire to be right. dishonest, dishonest, or well, take advantage, or fudge certain things. Yeah. So what do you do with this? How do you well, how do you try to be honest? What is going to motivate us to be honest and to to live it? Well, I think one of the things is to look at the consequences mm -hmm. of of these actions. The greatest one that we've seen is what has this happened is obviously is this whole one lie has led to all of this that we've been living through. 
they would have just honestly said, we are in trouble, this is happening, and uh, this virus has gotten out and it's jumping into the human species, we need help. I think the whole world would have jumped to their, to their help. And we would have never held it against them. Uh, and we would have never been, and we'd certainly not be in the circumstances in which we are today. Um, but look at one line, one cover up like this. That's caused such pain and death and financial ruin. So think about that. One lie, what, what the devastation of one lie can do. Uh, but let's say, kind of at the more personal level, where things like that aren't necessarily at stake, it doesn't seem like. Um, what can motivate you there? Well, the other, there's still consequences. But the, the other thing um, is, you're, there's always going to be consequences. Right. Um, so because the devil, is, the devil is going to make sure that there are consequences. Yeah. Lies then, always distance you from, from other people, mm -hmm. right? The same way that truth unites, even if you're telling something that's very uncomfortable to tell, and sometimes especially when you're telling something that's uncomfortable to tell, you're showing that you're willing to be vulnerable with the other person. That tends to unite people, despite the fact that it might be painful at that time. But as you lie, even if the other person doesn't recognize that you're lying, that's going to distance you from them. Um, right. And that's one of the many consequences of lies. We're all begging for honesty. That is why this, this is, even it seems to be sometimes the, the, the commandment most overlooked and, uh, and hardly ever talked about really, honestly. honestly. Um, it is very, very important. It, it is the fabric of our, it's really the fabric of human interaction. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants you. I mean, you want your. You, the first thing you want to look at when you're in a relation with somebody is, are they honest? You know. And what does that mean to be honest? Like I gave that example. Of, you know, what if your wife is it? Is it wrong, father, to lie to my wife when she says, "Does this dress make me look fat?" You know. Well, what's what's the problem with that question? First of all, it's a debating question. <laughs> the honest, dishonesty here is very, it's very slick. Um, so can you tell white lies or not? I don't know. We'll leave it up to the expert here. I think usually... Um, All depends. Is that a white lie? Should you be honest? Should you say, no dear, that doesn't, look com that, doesn't compliment you. that doesn't compliment your figure. But you know, nevertheless, that I love you regardless of your figure and regardless of these other superficial things that you're so worried about. I'm sure it would start a great argument in your family. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Usually in those situations you can find something to say, you know, not necessarily that specific question, but usually when you want to tell a white lie and that's kind of the easy way out, there's usually something you can say that's honest, that redirects the focus of the conversation to something else, and, and isn't like you avoiding the question either. Um, so sometimes you have to be a little creative about that, but um, usually there's there's a way you can um, just be honest, say something that's true, um, and and move on, right? Or you know you might be able to answer little questions like that honestly in a positive way too. <laughs> so let's not forget that. But um, but usually there's something you can say that's um, honest and that moves beyond kind of the the superficial, like Father Ned said. Um, so, can you say white lies? I don't think you should. But, at the same time, I, I think it, it is, you know, a lesser degree of... Obviously, of there's, lie. there's, the, I mean, not every lie is obviously the, 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 uh, the same. Right. Right. This is where the problem goes in. Is, is it sinful? More than likely, yes. Um, is it the same? No. And obviously, you know, you can sit there and say, well, how many cookies did you take? And um, you will say, I took four. And you know you've eaten a whole. You just said four. You didn't say cookies. You said dozen. Could have been dozen. No, see, but you still have the intent to deceive right. there. So what is a lie? So <laughs> this is where we need to get back to a lie. So it says, a lie is to say to another what we believe to be untrue with the intention of deceiving. With the intention of deceiving. Lies are offensive to God, and the scripture says that a devil 
is the father of lies. Therefore, my child, if you love God, you will be very careful on the occasions, on all occasions, to tell the truth. Now, this also presupposes one thing: that what is being asked of you is something that the other person deserves to know. Or has well, the right person has a, has a right to know, but also that the other person has a good intent with that information. For instance, I guess in seminary... Classic example. A classic example. Well, in the seminary they usually bring up this. Someone knocks on your door, and it's in the middle of the war, and you're hiding three Jewish people. Can you lie about that? Are these Jewish people here? And you say no. Right. For instance, the, the story of Immaculate, where the, the, the pastor hid away... What, 11 people in a bathroom because they had machetes with still blood on them and with the intent to kill and said, so is it to being dishonest to lie to them um, to, say, to save that person's life? The person is not, does not have a right to that information with the intent of killing someone. So can you lie in that circumstance? My opinion it would be yes, because the person does not have the right to use that information for the detriment of these other people. That would not be a lie in that case. Does that make sense? Somewhat. There's no definitive answer to that, but I mean, I think all of us understand the, the moral quality of that is very different than just straight up telling a lie without a good reason for it, right? Um, and I think there is... Well, no, so, you know, you, you have to be, it, it, it is nuanced, obviously, um, and purposely so. But the idea is, in your, your everyday run-of-the-mill um, interactions with one another, we need to be honest with, with mm -hmm. each other. And you need to also form your children as well in, in honesty. This is something, um, talking about parents, um, I saw, I was looking through, uh, so there's a great uh, collection of books from St. Jose Maria Escriva, um, and he, he uh, in these books, he basically gives little points of reflection on different virtues and so on and so forth. So I was looking at what he says on honesty, um, and one of his quotes is, how much harm parents, teachers, and directors can do when they demand absolute sincerity and then, when they are told the whole truth, are frightened. Um, so I think that's important to remember that if we want people to be honest with us, then we can't be frightened of or scandalized by the truth that we hear when people are willing to be honest with us. But rather, as, as fellow human beings, right, we understand, this is part of it too, we need to have the humility to understand our own weakness, right? in order to be willing to receive, to know the truth about another person and not judge them or not react um, negatively to that, but rather still with love, react with love to the person. Um, and so this is an important aspect of the question of honesty too, is we need to be able to receive truths as well. Um, well, there's, there's your typical, it goes into your typical example. Why do you, well, um, children say white lies to their parents. Where were you last night? What are they going to say? You know, usually the parent already knows where you were. Um, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they're fishing. You know, but there's a great test right there. The parents going to say, "Will the, the reason why the parents are?" And this is for the children to understand. The reason why your parents get so upset with you is because. That honesty is so important to them. That relationship between a child and a, and a parent is such that if a child loses their trust in their parent, that is like the worst, one of the worst things. So once again, when you look at these things, you have to look at the roots. Where is the temptation coming from? Why am I tempted even to lie in this situation? That's really, because there's lots of different motivations. You can learn a lot about yourself about well, what are my values. It tells you a lot about your values in life sometimes, whether you value 
appearances, if you value money, if you value um, human life itself, if you value the, your relationship with God, all of these things. Um, so this is kind of why, why we're measured. A person is measured in, in, by their honesty. So telling white lies to your parents to get out of trouble often. Maybe the parent is so reactionary, so over the top, that that's what they're, they feel that they're forced to do. You know, you don't, they don't have a good measure of how to respond to an honest answer. But that's something you could talk about as well, having kind of reflected on this. Um, because ultimately, yeah, I mean, if there is a relationship with your parent that is not the greatest that you would like to improve, that's right. one of the number one yeah. ways to do that is to be fully honest, right? And even if that means for a time you have to bear the brunt of um, just reactions to that honesty, um, in the end it's going to heal that relationship, whereas lies are only going to separate you further. Um, and this is actually something Mother Teresa says with, with honesty is, honesty and transparency make you vulnerable, be honest and transparent anyway, right? So this is, this is part of, this draws in kind of everything about Christianity, that ultimately we need to be willing to suffer in order to do the good, right? Um, that doing what is right... Um, and seeking out the love of God in our lives, seeking to live out the love of God is something that we're willing to suffer for, right? Um, so often we avoid suffering at all costs, and then we seek out pleasure at all costs. But that's not what life is about for us Christians, right? We're not here for our comfort. We're not here for our pleasure. We're here for greatness. We're here for love. Um, this is what God created us for, and this is what we're trying to live out by trying to develop these different virtues. Um, so that's, that's something important to keep in mind. And, you know, if it's going to cost something to be honest, to develop a rapport of honesty, um, especially with parents, it's worth doing. Honesty will, will uh, make you vulnerable, will reveal your weakness, and we all have them. And sometimes it probes that. And so we have to... It calls us to be virtuous in many, many areas of our life. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's so important, too, because it, it, pulls, it starts to pull every virtue out of you in order to be honest, in order to also be on the other side of the reception of it, you know, of knowing the truth of something. And it's like, that's a very ugly truth that I have to learn today about myself or about the person that you're dealing with or the weakness that they have. And the response that we have to have as Christians is, you know, we too are sinners. You know, we have our own weakness in different areas of our life. Um, and what would you rather have? A, someone that's benevolent in your weakness? Jesus was that way. If Jesus or the Holy Spirit even honestly shows to you your fault in your life. It isn't there just to, to pin you down and say, you're, you're this, and, you know, to make you feel bad about yourself. The Holy Spirit, when he reveals these things, when he goes, probes into us like that, and this honest, because this is now an honest relationship that we have with God, when God reveals some of our weaknesses to ourselves, it's there to cure us of those things. The ultimately, in heaven, we're going to be cured of all of it, thanks be to God. So, one other aspect I want to talk about um, that we haven't really hit on yet is one of the consequences of lying is that you become a liar, right? This was something that uh, my moral professor would harp on. And this is true of all of the vices, right? So if we talk about honesty being a virtue, um, the opposite of a virtue is a vice, so the vice of lying. Um, and what characterizes virtues and vices is that they're habits, right? They're things that we get used to doing so they become second nature. Um, and this is one of the consequences of telling lies, is that it becomes second nature to tell lies. Um, so this was, I mean, this was something I realized in my own life, um, actually in my high school days. I remember I, I told a lie to my parents about where I was one day, <laughs> not because I wanted, well, because I wanted to hide something because I didn't want them to be scared. But we don't need to go into that. 
Um, Why not? <laughs> be vulnerable. All right. I went to the hospital, <laughs> and I didn't want them to be scared about why I was going to the hospital. So I lied to them about that. Of course they found out about it, right? Um, because I was on their medical plan. I wasn't very bright back then, apparently. Anyway, so they find out about it. And afterwards, my dad tells me, you know, it's not so much the fact that you lied that hurt me. It's how easy it was for you to lie. Right. And that, I mean, that was, that was pretty impactful for me because it was like, I told a very, like, I gave a very detailed account of where I was and it was a complete lie, a complete fabrication. Um, and yet it just rolled off my tongue. Right. And that's what happens when you lie repeatedly is it becomes very easy to lie. Right. You, when you get to know somebody like Thomas Aquinas was, who's very gullible, it's usually because they're very honest all the time, right? Um, and we laugh at that, which is very sad, because we should have great respect for a person who has that kind of character. That's the kind of character we want to build as Christians. Um, not the side of gullibility, but rather the side that that finds it difficult to lie and finds it difficult to accept that somebody else would lie when they're living a Christian life. Um, obviously, we have to be practical. We have to be knowledgeable of the world, um, be as cunning as serpents, um, and yet innocent as, innocent doves. as doves. Thank you. Um, so, you know, there, there's a lot we could go into there, yes, but absolutely. we're going to develop our character one way or another. And if we lie repeatedly, even if it's small lies, then we're going to develop our character in that way. We become liars. People detect that pretty easily. And once they've caught you in a couple lies, they stop trusting almost anything you say. Here's another consequence, a bad consequence of lies. You lie to anybody with the purpose of lying and that they make a bad decision. And now that bad decision becomes another thing to do. Well, see, now you're caught in the night. Actually, you're caught in a lot. See, and this is how it all works. The devil is really crafty in all of this. It's just, uh, just a, just a tangled web of mess. It's like all your computer wires are all just tied, tied up. They're like snakes. Just get all, you know, just, they have a life of their own. And so too do these lies. One lie leads to another lie, and then another lie, and another lie, and then you just become a perpetual liar, just like half of these politicians, or well, say half, lots of them. You can't keep track of your lies. You can't keep track of the things that we that you say, and so. So, if you want to look up a good example of this in the church, look up the life of Annibale Bonini and his work after the Second Vatican Council. <laughs> but we won't go into that. So, well, there's many, even, and some people can use also their authority. Which is another thing to perpetuate a lie. And that is even more problematic. This is, which is where you get into grave. The higher, like I said, the higher you are in a, in a structure, the more integrity and honesty you need to have. Mm -hmm. It's important. We, we rely on that information. We rely on, on that. That's why we need honest politicians. You need honest people even in the bureaucracies. You need honest doctors and honest lawyers and all of these things. And they're becoming rare. Our society needs a reset on all of this. Because look at us. It's, 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 you know, you don't trust anything that comes at you. There's gaslighting going on. Um, and you, you become very motivation. You become yeah, you become, you, yeah, exactly. And you're not meant, and look at the anxiety. Why is the world dying of anxiety? Why is the number one drugs that are out there all have to deal with anxiety? Because it goes back to lying, if you ask me. Who do you trust? Are you trustworthy? Can you, can you do these things? Um, can you be trustworthy? And so it's very, very important, this, this virtue is what we're trying to say, first and foremost. Um, it requires other virtues to be honest. Sincerity, to be sincere, which means in Latin. I know there's some people out there that don't like Latin, but it's the foundation of our language. Um, sincerity means sin, means without, sere, which means wax, without wax. So they would take these marble columns, you could tell a good marble column, but you could tell a good marble by the, if there's little pits and holes in it. So what they would do is, 
they would fill those little pits and holes with wax. And if they would say it's sincere without wax, that means that the pillar was stronger and more integral. And this is where the power of sincerity comes from, and that word comes from. So, sincerity, without wax. We are without guile, without, without um, impurity in this, in this regard. And therefore, we are stronger in character, stronger person. And so this, it's, it's, it's important to us. It's a measure of a person. It measures you. All these Ten Commandments, they measure you as a human person in as much as you are a human person. The qualities and the dignity you have as a human person. It's very important for us to restore this, first and foremost, in our, in our institutions. It's in our own church, in our own selves, in our own families, in our own communities. Yeah, it's but that happens urgent in our lives individually right, right. It begins just, first and foremost yeah. when you're a child you know it's the relationships that we form it also it, it probes relationships right once again it, it's it's a, just a very profound it's something that we don't think about often but it's an absolutely and profound um, thing that we should probably reflect upon more you know like how sincere am I how honest am I do I am I always full of white lies am I a person that's, that's is not trustworthy. Am I always caught in my lies? And then do I get mad about it? And, and mm -hmm. It also triggers our anger, right? <laughs> because, you know, it's funny, Just we like can say a bunch of pull right. other virtues with them. Right. Vices also so, pull others. Yeah, exactly. And so you could, then you're like, you get mad about it. And then it's always funny because the one time that they do say the truth, <laughs> people don't believe them. And then they get mad. You don't believe me. Well, you know. This is how our minds and our hearts function. If you don't, if you prove yourself untrustworthy, it's hard for you to get it back. Also, another thing to motivate yourself is don't you want other people around you to be sincere? Don't you want other people around you to be honest in dealing with you? Yeah, so a good friend is somebody who, who's willing to correct you from to, time to time, right? And point out things that might be uncomfortable. But not to, in order to bring you down and pull, right. pull, pull you, build up, you up, but to say, yeah. I'm here to help you. To, to walk with you and be with you until you you gain that integrity back. But that's part of your being honest as a good friend as well, right? So in your own friendships, being willing to call out your own friends, or even more difficult sometimes, your own group of friends on on things that they do and say, look, you know, without without kind of breaking away from the group, saying we need to we need to work on this. Um, that, that can be very difficult as well. Um, but in all this, really, we just want to encourage you to reflect on all of this, reflect on the importance of honesty, reflect on where you're at, um, ask God for the gift of that virtue of honesty, and seek to grow in it even just in small ways, right? Begin, with, begin in the family. Begin making sure to be honest to your parents. That's a great way to start that, and, and really just to grow from there in honesty. Because if, if you grow in that, you're going to grow in integrity and in every other virtue, um, and ultimately you're going to set yourself up for living a, a full life, right? That's what God wants for us, and that's what God offers us in living out these commandments, is that we live, he wants life for us and life to the full. And that's, that's what we receive when we're willing to maybe suffer a little bit as we begin that. Um, and really always, you know, there's always suffering involved in the Christian life, but there's much more joy involved than suffering. Um, and to keep that in mind as well. Right. There so was, there's one last story I'll leave you with. This man who was, he was being, uh, he was very cautious with his money, so he would put his coins, this is a long time ago when he carried coins like this around, so he sewed three coins in his, with him in his suit pants. And so robbers came upon him and got his wallet, stole some other things that he was carrying with him. And uh, the man was so honest as he's running away, the, um, the, the, the honest man says, wait, 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 I told you I didn't have anything else, but I remembered that I had these two coins that were sewed into my pants. So here, I have these, I have these two gold coins, or that had, silver coins that I had with me. And the people were so t the robbers were so taken aback back at his honesty that they actually said, "We can't 
steal from you, you're too honest. You know, and the other, the, the robbers uh, and their thievery. So the unintended consequence of honesty was the fact that all things were well, and he even converted those who robbed him or were trying to rob him. And so virtue has has this power because behind every virtue uh, done in the name of God, in the name of Jesus. Is, has a has a power beyond what we can can imagine. Right, even the power of the Holy Spirit, Spirit yeah. you know, working, so that it, it opens up those channels of grace for others uh, to to be honest or to be good. So let's pray to the Lord today. Let's uh, let's give you a, a blessing so that you might um, pr try to practice more of this virtue in your life, and to, until you we are all safe and, and home together in the eternal life of, of God in, in heaven. So may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit send upon you now and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. That was one of the stories. <laughs> was it a true story? Yes, it was. Uh -huh. You never know. You can't trust anything.